Algebra Brick Math with Dr. Disler. Today we're going to be exploring place value. You know, place value is one of the hardest things for students to understand. So kids, today we're going to be exploring place value in a new way, the Brick Math way. First thing you need to do, go upstairs, get yourself a bunch of bricks. You're going to need a bunch of bricks. You're going to need specific bricks though for this lesson. You're going to need one by one bricks. You're going to need one by two bricks. You're going to need one by three bricks, and you're going to need one by four bricks, and you're going to need a base plate. Now, any size base plate will do, and if you didn't watch the Getting Started video on how the brick names work, you might want to go back and do that because that will be helpful in this lesson. You also might want some paper, and you might want some markers in, in the Lego brick colors, uh, green, blue, red, and black. And we are going to be using, I'm going to be using the Brick Math Kit today. And the Brick Math Kit um, just has exactly the bricks you need in it to do the Brick Math activities. But you can use your own Lego bricks and it's just fine. If you'd like to order the Brick Math Kit, you can do that on Amazon or you can do that on barnesandnoble.com or you can contact brickmathseries.com and order straight through the publisher. Today, in our place value lesson, we are going to talk about one of the things I know when you use uh, place value in your normal classroom. And that would be, I'm going to draw it right up here. That would be a place value chart. So normally, if you're doing a place value lesson, you start with your ones, your tens, and your hundreds, and you build this way. And we're going to be doing that, but we're going to do that in a little different way. So we're going to actually approach this in two different ways. One for our younger learners, our K2 learners building numbers, and then for our older learners uh, that build larger numbers. So we're going to do both. So here we go. First thing you need to do is we need to build a place value chart with our Lego bricks. So we're going to start in the top right hand corner of your base plate and you're going to put a one by one brick. Beside of that, vertically, up and down, you're going to place the one by two brick. Then you're going to place the one by three brick and you're going to place the one by four brick. Now, on your paper, you might want to draw this. So what I'm going to do up here is I'm going to draw this model so that you can see what you need on your base plate as well. And we're gonna label these parts because labeling your math is key. So there's my one by one brick. I'm gonna use a different color and here's my one by two brick. Here's my one by three brick. And by the way, if you buy the Brick Math series, there's a student book that has bubble uh, Brick Math base plate paper in it. So you could actually draw, uh, just color in your circles. You wouldn't need to draw all of the bricks this way. So then we would have one, two, three, four. Now let's talk about what these actually mean. So what this means is, in my one by one brick, that represents my ones, all of my ones. So if I'm going to build five, think about it, I'm going to need five one by one. This one represents my tens because it has one digit right here and one zero. So this is one zero, this is one. Now we have the one by three. This represents all of our hundreds. So this is one and two zeros. And then we have our thousands. So we have a thousand here. This is one and three zeros. So these represent the studs on your bricks. So we're going to leave this model here to help us as we build to remember this. All right, so let's get building. So now we are going to build. Um, we're going to build for our younger viewers first. So the first thing I want you to do is I want you to get two really long bricks. Now, I don't really care what size you use. I'm gonna use the one by 16 bricks because that's what I have in my kit, but they just need to be fairly long and you're gonna place them on the base plate so that they're spread out a little bit. And then you're gonna take a third long brick and you're gonna place it across the top, like so. So now if I look at this chart that I've made, I'm gonna draw it on my paper. So that's what my chart up there looks like. Except for on the top of this chart, I'm going to place my one by one brick for my ones. I'm going to place 
my one, on a second, I did not press these down hard enough and so they want to come off. So we have our one by one. We have, we have a one by two, which we're gonna place right here. I'm gonna place it horizontally. And for our younger learners, we're just gonna leave it like that because we're just gonna be dealing with tens and ones. I'm gonna move this one over just a tad bit. There we go. So we have tens and ones. So I'm gonna go back up here and just draw that for you. So we have the one by one brick and we have the one by two brick, which is our tens and our ones. Now what I'd like you to do is I would like for you to build the number 21. So let's think about it for a second. Think really hard. What bricks do you need? So these are our two, these are our tens, right? Our one by two brick. I'm building 21. So let's look at this number. This number is 21. So we want to think about how many tens are in 20? Mm, I think two, right? So we're going to take two one by two bricks and we're going to place it in our chart. So we've built 20 now. We have 20. I'm having trouble with this little brick. Okay, so now we have 20. And I ask you to build one one. So we have 21. So I'm going to place the one here. So now in our tens, hundreds, and ones chart, our place value chart, we have 21. Now underneath this, I'd like you to see if you can build 32. 32. So go ahead and take a minute, think about the bricks you need, and place them in your chart. Let's build 32. All right, here's what we have 10, 20, 30. We use that counting on 10, 20, 30, 1, 2. Now, a key thing to remember is that you should not use a one by two brick here, even though it's the same number of studs because this represents a 10 in this case. So we have 10, 20, 30, one, two. See if you can build 16, 16. So take a minute, think about what 16 might look like. Go ahead and place it on your base plate. my 16. I have 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So now let's also think about what this place value chart might mean in terms of writing an equation. So if I wanted to write this, I'm going to place this right here so you can see it. And let's go back to 21. So 21 is, we can see two tens and one one. If we look at our 32, we can see three tens and two ones. And if we look at our 16, we have one 10 and we have six ones. So we can see the expanded form of our number. All right, so young learners, let's go and build some numbers. Choose five numbers that you would like to build and build them out on your place value chart. And then write your equations for those numbers to show your expanded form. I'll give you a little time for that. We will have lots of answers here, so you may have something totally different than someone else, and that's perfectly fine. We are learning about numbers with place value today. All right, let's share. Let's say that I built 22. I built 22. What would it look like? 22 would look like this. So look at your five numbers and see what you have. And see if you can tell someone else around you what numbers you have and what the expanded form of those numbers might look like in a math sentence. So this is our place value for younger learners. Now let's move to older learners. What would older learners do? We're gonna talk about maybe second grade through fifth grade, fourth grade, uh, where we're building larger numbers. We do not want a place value chart for that, though. What we want to do is we're going to build the number 1,311. 
So let's think about what bricks we need. Let's look at our chart. Our thousands are our longest bricks. So we have thousands, hundreds, tens, and one. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna build 1,000. So that means that we need one one by four. And we're gonna build 100. And we're gonna build 11. So we have one of each of these bricks right here. So now, if we think about this, we have 1,111. All right, let's see if you can build, now that we've done one together, see if you can build the number 345. 345. We've had time, and now I have 345. And I wanna talk about the way I build my number, because you may not have done yours the same way, which is perfectly fine. You notice I built all of my place values in the same color. All of my hundreds are white, green, and blue uh, for my tens and my ones. You do not have to do that. Uh, Dr. Dissler just likes color that way. So when we think about it, I can definitely see all of my hundreds, all of my tens, and all of my ones. And I can look at my expanded form and I can say 300 plus 40 plus 5, or 300 added to 40 added to 5. So we have 345 here. Now, another way that you might choose to build yours is what I call stacking. And if you do that, that means that you built upwards like this. Stack them up on top of each other, all of your place values, and you make stacks for each place. So we have a 100 stack, we have a 10 stack, and we have a 1 stack. So you could do it like a stacking process if you'd like as well. Most children like a stacking process, so I would imagine you like that. Now, one of the things that I will also say about this is that um, I'm going to place it back out horizontally because I want to share a couple of vocabulary things about math that I'm sure your teachers have shared with you, but this is where fourth graders, because I taught fourth grade for a long time, and fourth graders struggle with this concept. So I want to make sure that we have our vocabulary down when it comes to place value as well because that's an important part of understanding the math. So let's get all these bricks back on here in a horizontal way so that you can see each place value. You guys have to talk about this. All right, so I've got a question for you boys and girls. How, what number, what digit is in the tens place? So take a minute, look at the model. What number's in the tens place? I will bet you said four. And if you did, you would be correct. One, two, three, four. But now I'm gonna ask this in a different way. What is the value of the four in this number? So think about that for a minute. What is the value of the four in this number? 10, 20, 30, 40. So the value is 40. What digit is in the ones place in this number? One, two, three, four. So there's four ones in this number, and the value is four. Because we're doing four times one, four times 10, because we're in the tens place. Now we have to look at our hundreds. What is the digit in the hundreds place? The digit is three. One, two, three bricks. What is the value? Well, each one of these is worth 100, so 100, 200, 300. The value is 300. Now I have an even harder question for you, and I'm gonna tell you a little secret. Most adults miss this too, so see if you can get this right. How many total tens are in this number? Hmm. Think about that one for a moment. Because if you think it's four, that is not correct. How many total tens are in this number? And I'm going to ask it a different way. How many $10 bills would I need to make this number? The total tens in this number would be 34. So I would need 10 $10 bills for each one of these, 10, 20, 30, and I would need one $10 bill for each one of these. So 30, one, two, three, four, 34. So today what I'd like you to do is take your Lego bricks at home, build yourself some numbers, and practice writing them in expanded form, and practice identifying the place values of those numbers. You can stack them, you can make them uh, linear in a horizontal way. The way you build is not important, it's the identifying of the bricks. So this is Intro to Place Value. Thank you for joining Dr. D for Brick Math with Dr.